So now that we know what a subprogram is, we're going to talk about the different flavors of subprograms. There's two different types of subprograms that we're going to use. The first one is called a procedure. And this is the most basic form of a subprogram. This shares the same definition as a subprogram itself. So it is a reusable block of code that performs a single task. And this one is pretty useful, um, and we see a lot of this, things like console.write line. It simply does something. It writes text under the screen. There's no question about what that does. Um, it doesn't do anything other than write text to the screen. That is a procedure. The second thing we're going to talk about in another module after this one is something called a function. And really, a function and a procedure are exactly the same, except they differ in one way. This is the same definition, a reusable block of code that performs a single task and this is where it differs. Performs a single task and returns a value or a result to the programmer. Now this is very important. It doesn't return it to the user. It returns it to the programmer. The programmer then has the option to do whatever they want with that data. They could give it to the user in form of output or they could do calculations on it or they could just store it for future use later on. So let's give a couple examples of each of these. A procedure. One example would be a console.write line. The write line command is the procedure. And in order to do that, we have some form of text inside these brackets. A function, things like console.readline. What does it return? What does readline return? Well, it returns the text that the user asked for. Another example, let's say math dot round. It requires two pieces of information, a value. So a value to be rounded and a number of decimal places, number of decimals. And this of course is going to return the actual rounded value of the variable called value. So these are um, are two types of subprograms, our procedure and our function. So right now we're going to focus on a procedure. We're going to look at the syntax or the language, the grammar to actually create a procedure within C Sharp. Um, and then we're going to actually implement something like that. So the syntax is fairly simple. Let's quickly jump over to C Sharp and see what we can do here. So what you see here is a click email. We're just going to ignore that for a second. And I'm going to go just below here. And notice that I'm no longer in an event. I'm not in the click event. I'm not up where we create our variables up below the class line. I'm in my own little section down here that's still within the class brackets. We see that we have a class bracket here and we have the ending class bracket here. So I'm within those brackets. I'm still inside the class. Now this is where I can create my subprograms. So the first subprogram I'm going to create, uh, we'll just keep it very simple. I'm going to say, uh, public void and just as an example we're going to say uh, display info now let me just quickly write this out and explain exactly what's going on here so what we see here is this line right here this is called our signature line and it's called our signature line because it's unique just like somebody's signature and it defines all the information about a given subprogram. So what we've done here is we've actually created a brand new subprogram called Display Info. There's nothing really that um, different about this that you haven't seen before, um, except for the fact that we're actually creating this on our own as opposed to using something that somebody else already has somebody else has already created, like console.write line. What can we do inside of here? Anything we want. Now, obviously, the name should be descriptive of what's going on inside of the subprogram. Also, notice the naming convention for 
the subprogram. It's a little bit different than what we've been naming our variables. It is called mixed case. So instead of camel case, where the first letter is a capital and then, uh, sorry, the first word is a capital, then each word after that starts with a capital. Repeat one more time. The first word is lowercase, and each word after that is uh, re is begins with a capital letter. In mixed case, every word begins with a capital letter. No questions. That's exactly what it is. And the reason why we do this is to differentiate it from variables within the code. So when we see display info, because I see that it starts with a capital D, I know that it's not a variable. I know that it's going to be a subprogram. Now these next two pieces here, this public and void, uh, don't worry about the public for now. You'll see that this one up here is private. Um, at this stage in the game, uh, public or private are fine. Uh, in later courses, we'll actually go into what that actually means and how it uh, separates things. Um, the void really tells us that it's a procedure. If you remember before, we had procedures and functions. Um, a procedure doesn't return anything, so there's no return value. So this void tells C Sharp to say, hey, I'm not going to return anything, so don't expect it. Void is just another way of saying nothing. And then we give it its name. And then we have opening and closing brackets. But there's nothing in there. We'll get to that a little bit later. So now inside of here, we can actually add whatever code we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly create something very small. And I'm in a form program, so I'm just going to display a couple. I'm just going to display um, a couple message boxes. Message box dot show. Let's say um, name. I spell it correctly. And we're going to say Mr. Link. And we do another one. Message box dot show. And we're going to say uh, profession. Teacher. Okay, so if we run our program right now, what will happen? Well, not a whole lot. See it pops up. And I just have this little button here that says call subprogram that does absolutely nothing. Well, because that code, that button calls this click event, and there's nothing inside that click event. But there's nothing that actually uses this code called display info. Remember, this is like creating the stamp. We haven't actually used the stamp. So in order to use it, just like any variable, if we wanted to use a variable, all we have to do is refer to it by name. Well, it's the same thing that we do here. If I want to use my subprogram called display info, all I need to do is refer to it by name. So let's say up in here, every time we click uh, that um, call subprogram button, I'm going to call I'm going to call my subprogram named display info. I do that just by writing down the name. You see, as I type it, it starts to show up inside of the IntelliSense. Now I have to end it with my opening and closing brackets. That tells me, remember, if, we, if you remember from previous lessons, the brackets mean that it's an action. In this case, the action is just showing a couple message boxes. So if we run our program now and we click the button, we now get some message boxes. Name, Mr. Lane, profession, teacher. And then we're all done. If I click it again, it will do the same process. Because every time we click that button, oops, let's close this. Every time we click that button, it calls the click event. But the click event calls display info. So it creates a chain reaction of events, each one calling something else. So um, again, we can reuse this as many times as we want. Maybe I want to do something else. Maybe I want to uh, put another message box in here just in between, just to separate things. I can do whatever I want, but I'm just going to put a message box. Uh, show. I'm just going to say hello. And this is just to show you that we can separate these things. And I'm going to call display info again. Now if I run it, I could hit this. For every time I hit this, I'm going to get Mr. Lane and teacher. And then after this, I should get that message that says hello. Because if you remember, our programs run from top to bottom. So we get hello. And then again, we're going to get Mr. Lane and teacher. Because if we look at our code here, it will first call this line, and when that's done, it will then call this line. When that line is finished executing, it will then call this line, which is the subprogram again. We can reuse it as much as possible. 
Now, you can also start to see the readability. If I didn't have our subprogram called display info here, I would actually have to have both these lines of code in both locations. So instead of three lines of code, I'm all of a sudden already up to five lines of code. And if I wanted it more times, every time I would have to repeat both these lines of code. And then I'd have to actually interpret and understand exactly what those things mean. But by just putting in the name and making sure that the name is descriptive enough, I don't have to worry about that anymore. It's very simple and it's very clear. Um, so like I said, all we have to do is call it by name. And let's try something a little different. Let's create, just so we can see some change here. Um, I'm just going to eliminate one of the, no, no, I'll leave those in there. Actually, I don't want to change too much. I'm going to create a variable up here. And this variable is going to be an integer. And we're just going to call it int counter. And we're going to give it a starting value of zero. And what we're going to do is just to illustrate a point that this code is being called multiple, multiple times, inside of the display info, I am going to increase counter by one. Counter equals counter plus one. Now, if you remember from class, oops, we could just as easily have just written counter plus plus, which would does the exact same thing as counter equals counter plus one. One adds one to itself, but we don't need that right now. We're just going to keep things simple. And just to display exactly how that counter is changing, every time display info is called, that counter is increased by one. Not every time a message box is shown, but every time the whole subprogram itself is called. Now I'm going to display that value. Message box oops, don't show count counter. Now if we run our program, we hit this, the first thing we're going to see is the count, which is one, because we've hit it, we've called the subprogram display info once. We hit OK, it's going to go through the normal chain of command, it's going to see hello, and then now we're at count is two, because we just called it for a second time. So the count variable was actually increased. So what you can see from this is that we've actually manipulated a variable from up top inside of the subprogram without any extra code. We only had to write one line of code and it modified it twice because we called the code twice. We called the subprogram twice. So that is a procedure.